Today's episode of The Bitcoin Show is brought to you by Mt. Gox, mtgox.com and Bitcoin Bonus, bitcoinbonus.com and Meze Grill, M-E-Z-E Grill.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Bitcoin Show. This is episode 46, and uh, today we're just going to do a really fun little interview because um, with someone who's uh, arguably one of the most famous people in Bitcoin, although you may have never seen his face before. He's the guy behind, well, first of all, let me ask you this. If you Google Bitcoin, what comes up? Probably, if you put it into Google search terms engine, it will recommend Alpaca. And you're going to wonder, what the heck does Bitcoin have to do with Alpaca if you're new to Bitcoin? But anybody who's an old-time Bitcoin person knows that everything to do with Bitcoin is Alpaca socks. We've got that we use coins.com is the, probably the most recent thing that features an Alpaca. And, uh, but actually, many, many of the early stories were about what you can buy with a Bitcoin. And, or more than one Bitcoin, maybe. And um, always what comes up is alpaca socks. And people are like, what? <laughs> what does alpaca socks have to do with it? What it has to do with it is our guest today, the man behind grasshillalpacas.com, David Forster. Welcome, David. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So you are, where are you based? Out west somewhere, I take it. Uh, actually, well, no, actually, uh, western Massachusetts is where the farm is located. And uh, we have 19 alpacas currently here. It's a small family farm. Uh, I'm involved with the farm and also the Bitcoin um, part of it as sort of a sideshow uh, to that efforts. Although it's, I mean, we've gotten more publicity for the Bitcoin part of it than we ever did with our Farm, the farm itself. So it's, uh, it's been quite a quite a wild ride we've had here. So, so we, when they, when people ask which came first, the alpaca or the Bitcoin, it was <laughs> clearly the alpaca. It uh, it did. It, it I think it beat the Bitcoin by a couple years. But a couple years. <laughs> yeah. So like what, 2007 or something like that? We started the farm in uh, beginning of 2005. Wow. Uh, okay. We started get getting ready to bring the first animals on the farm. Uh, the farm's been in the family for five generations, but uh, it hadn't been used for very much in terms of active farming for 30 years. So we put it back into production, um, yeah, a couple six years ago now, uh, and started off with alpacas and uh, been growing ever since. So, and every great family farm has a geek in it, a tech geek, and you're the guy. <laughs> I'm the guy. Yeah. And how did you discover? I mean, so many questions. How did you discover Bitcoin? Uh, well, that's kind of lost to the annals of history uh, at this point. But uh, <laughs> I don't really remember, to be honest. Wow. But I do it's know. I do know that. Lying. I'm pretty sure I have an idea how I found it, and I'm pretty sure that that was. Uh, I read a book uh, called *A Lodging of Wayfaring Men*, and uh, it was awesome. Mm. And I did a Google search to try to find some of these sort of anonymous digital currencies. I thought it was a cool concept. Um, yeah, I, I have a, as well as being a bit of a tech geek, I'm also an economics nerd um, in, you know, self-taught. But uh, so the, the idea uh, really intrigued me. So I started Googling for, you know, anonymous digital currencies and Bitcoins popped up. And at the time, I mean, it was, almost nothing. It was like nobody, really nobody had heard of it. Now, you know, people, a few people have heard of it. <laughs> Back then, it was literally nobody had heard of it. They were selling for, you know, pennies. Um, and I kind of dismissed the whole concept at that point uh, for probably six months or so until finally I, I kind of revisited it and a couple, you know, <laughs> a couple economic news stories around the world kind of convinced me to start actually looking at uh, alternative payment methods a little more seriously. So I started doing research on Bitcoins and I thought to myself, you know, how am I going to get one of these? Because frankly, I didn't trust, at the time, I didn't trust anyone. Like if, if I figured I, f I sent an envelope full of cash um, <laughs> to get buy Bitcoins, all I would lose is an envelope full of cash and I wouldn't get anything. So <laughs> I decided to start uh, 
figuring out a way to get Bitcoins in a different way. So I started thinking about what I could sell, uh, and alpaca socks came to mind since we were already selling them. And I whipped the site up in, you know, it took almost no time to put the site up. I listed my site on a couple of the web forms, and mm -hmm. uh, pretty much the rest is history after that. Uh, it just kind of blew up without me really doing much work in terms of marketing. It was... Uh, and it's been pretty cool. Uh, and I got my Bitcoins, uh, which was the original <laughs> yeah. reason I started. So, Because you were able to, that, was, that's, that is one of the easiest way to get your hands on some Bitcoins, is to sell something that you're already selling for exactly. Bitcoins, right? So mm -hmm. in the early days, okay, when you first start, and okay, now, okay, that's the, the Bitcoin side. Now back to the alpaca side. The farm's yep. been in, going on in the family since 2005 or roughly, and, or four or five. And then, um, now, did you, did your family get into uh, alpacas like to breed them and sell them or do they did they start out with manufacturing these knitted things like socks well we started off in, in just breeding uh, alpacas and showing them uh, we show alpacas uh, at all the alpaca shows um, so when I say award-winning alpacas that's what I mean we go to alpaca shows and we win ribbons with them and then we sell the uh, breeding stock to people who want to get in the industry and grow a herd for either fiber production or f as breeding stock to increase the the qualities of the uh, the herds. Um, and when we started, it was really about that. We started selling socks really just to try to pay the bills, um, mm -hmm. basically just trying to break even in terms of uh, out-of-pocket expenses year to year in terms of feed costs and things like that. Alpacas are very low maintenance, uh, which was part of why we uh, decided to go with alpacas. My, I wrote the business plan for the alpaca farm when my father told me, I have all this land, it's not being used, figure out a way that I might possibly someday make a little money, but some way of actually taking care of this land and improving it, uh, and something you know that we can do as a family. So I wrote the business plan, it was between Highland cattle and alpacas, mm -hmm. and for frankly there was a there's a higher profit margin in alpacas or there mm -hmm. was at the time. Uh, I think there probably still is. Um, so, and they're a smaller animal, so less daunting to try to uh, manage than a you know, 1,500 pound uh, cow. Yeah. So uh, we went with alpacas and uh, huh. made our first purchase in uh, I think it was the end of 2004 and got the farm ready and took possession of them in 2005 uh, and been growing organically since then. Uh, just breeding for our own uh, herd improvement so okay now um when you say organically you mean naturally are you is it are they are they uh, uh, not organically in the other sense you know, i mean i mean organically as in uh naturally on farm on farm uh, uh expansion okay as opposed to going out and buying a whole bunch of animals we have bought oh, a few but mainly it's just we br we breed them Beauty. they have babies our yeah. herd gets bigger, we sell some, et cetera. Okay. Uh, although, that said, um, we're not certified organic, but we do, um, it is as close to that as we can get um, without putting the animal's health at risk. So okay. we minimize their exposure to nasty things, and we yeah. uh, do our best to improve the soil quality so that we have the best possible animals as a result of that. So it will be healthy to eat the alpaca fiber. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, maybe not. Uh, yes, uh, if uh, if you could actually digest the fiber, yeah, uh, and if you could afford to eat the animals, uh, then the animals would be quite healthy too. But at this mm -hmm. point, uh, they are a little pricey. Uh, if Do, does anybody eat alpaca meat? Oh yes, uh, really. Down in south, down in South America, it's uh, quite popular. In Peru, they have three million alpacas, and so when they Ooh. when an when an alpaca gets too old, can't have babies anymore or if they have a baby they don't need for fiber for whatever reason uh, they do eat them down there as as well as uh, llamas which is a relative of the alpaca I've never eaten alpaca when I went to Argentina last year I did eat llama uh, I've heard it's very similar to alpaca um, and it's hmm. it's it's very similar to goat uh, it's quite close to goat hmm. <laughs> so Wow. So how does, it, how does the price of the meat compare to other meats down there? I guess it must be... Uh, down there, it's, mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit more expensive than goat, but mm -hmm. it's not any... It's, it's, it's not out of, out of uh, reason, yeah, it's beyond not, reason. It's not crazy, although mm -hmm. there, it's, 
you don't necessarily find it a lot either. It's mm-hmm. not necessarily extremely common, at least yeah. in Argentina, maybe in Peru, but... It's just when they have excess alpacas for some reason. Okay, so now, how, when did you guys get into manufacturing socks, and are there any other products that you guys uh, make with the fiber? So, we, we actually work with a uh, fiber cooperative uh, mm-hmm. based in the Northeast, mm-hmm. um, and we pool our fiber together with a bunch of different alpaca uh, breeders, mm-hmm. uh, most of them in the Northeast and all of them in the United States, so it's all U.S. based. Mm-hmm. And it's actually made at mills in the Northeast. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't actually have a mill on site here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just work closely with some of the very, like, very small like cottage industry scale mm-hmm. mills that... Mm-hmm. Uh, are making these socks uh, mm-hmm. for us mm-hmm. um, in the area. Uh, okay. I use the term loosely, but it's all, yeah. relatively speaking, regional, and it's certainly all in the United States. Okay. So, so. You, she- you actually, then you take your alpacas and you actually shear the fiber and send it off to them, as a, right. and then others, other farmers do too? Yes, we, mm-hmm. uh, we shear once a year, um, mm-hmm. and preferably right around May, uh, before it gets too hot. Mm-hmm. Um, and you take that fiber, you get between six and eight pounds on average per an, per animal, mm-hmm. and you send that off to. Uh, we pool it with other growers. For one thing, we're a small small operation, so if we had to come up with um, all the right colors of alpacas to mm-hmm. blend together to get the different color products, right. we would we would really struggle to do that. Uh, yeah. We don't have all the color animals, for instance. There are mm-hmm. 22 different like identified alpaca colors um hmm. they're really to most people you wouldn't necessarily think that there's 22 of them hmm. because it's like dark gray medium gray rose gray uh <laughs> there's in terms of the browns there's the fawn, beige fawn light brown medium brown dark brown um and then you get into the blacks too so there's there's 22 separate colors uh we and don't have that they're many basically all farm. gray black or brown right <laughs> What's that? and they're all basically gray black gray black or brown in some or, variation or white white's or the white. most common actually yeah you um, know this rug we have right here <laughs> i don't know if you ever noticed our rug it looks like snowfall or something but it's actually alpaca um is it really <clears throat> yes it's, r- it's so soft i had never I don't think I've ever touched an alpaca, except, I don't know, maybe in a petting zoo at some point in my life, but um, it's so, so, I've never felt any fur more soft. Um, mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's softer, stronger, lighter, and warmer than wool. Yeah. Um, it keeps you warm when wet, unlike cotton, mm. and, but it doesn't make you itch like wool because it doesn't have, uh, I believe it's lanolin is one of the things, the major component of that itchiness of wool oh. um so alpaca fiber is not actually wool even though a lot of people call it wool it's just a fiber mm-hmm. uh it doesn't have a name as far as i know no one's coined a phrase for alpaca fiber yet but mm-hmm. um uh yeah and it, it's incredibly soft um yeah. which is what makes the socks and the ha- and the other products we make uh currently it's all we're selling for bitcoins is the socks we do have a local um shop that we set up uh right around thanksgiving time that we sell some other products, but uh, it's been it's been enough just to try to keep up with the sock sales. So mm-hmm. I haven't expanded that yet. But um, but yeah, the uh, the fiber is fantastic stuff, and the industry is growing in the United States. Um, it's also used in a, and this is one of the markets that's really been developing now is high end luxury fabrics. Uh, a lot of really high end suits uh, will be made out of alpaca or are made out of alpaca. Wow. So. <clears throat> there's a lot of potential there. Um, yeah, it's, just, it's really cool. It would have to be high-end luxury because it's not not cheap. So, how, like the the socks are uh, the socks are as because they're the woven fiber. Are they mm-hmm. as soft as the actual fur? If, uh, like I'm touching this actual fur here. Is it is it similar? I've never actually had my hands on a pair of socks yet. I'm gonna have to order some. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so the the socks that we're selling are um, I believe they're 78 percent pure alpaca. Uh, and the other parts, uh, nylon and lycra, to give them uh, s- to make them more stretchable mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. and help them to wear better. Uh, mm-hmm. So, but uh, they are they are very soft. They actually get softer every time you wash them through, and you can wash them just in standard washing machine, dry wow. them on either low heat or air dry, whatever, and mm-hmm. they actually get. Uh, uh, softer every time you wear them, so wow. or every time you wash them. So, and what's the consi- like the uh, texture? Is it are they 
are they thin like a dress sock or are they thicker like a athletic sock? They are thicker. Um, <clears throat> there's a, a well-known brand of wool socks uh, that I would compare them to. Okay. Um, and okay. uh, so they're, they're a thicker sock. They're good for like a hiking sock. Mm. Um, although at the same time, uh, they're not overly heavy and, and warm so mm -hmm. I consider them a three season sock I don't mm -hmm. wear them in the summer too much mm -hmm. uh, but fall okay. winter and, and spring they're, they're very nice. Um, nice we have been toying with the idea of introducing some other socks um, including a like a casual dress sock uh, mm -hmm. which would be a much thinner sock mm -hmm. we haven't done it yet uh, but it's mm -hmm. We're probably going to shortly. <laughs> so. And you can you can order these colors. I mean, d can you literally choose tw from twenty two colors, or is it like? Uh, so, not, <laughs> no. Un unfortunately, you can't. Uh, <laughs> there are just four colors that we have available uh, in terms of the socks, and that's mm -hmm. mainly because uh, not every color is all that abundant in mm -hmm. sort of the genetics of the animals. So. Right. And the socks are made with a blend of the different colors to try to get consistency. Mm -hmm. uh, if we tried to go with a, um, a, you know, a certain uh, color from a certain type of alpaca all the time, it'd be very difficult to get consistency across uh, across lots. So that's right. why they're blended as they are. Um, and actually, as it is, we're having trouble getting the darker socks. The the black alpacas are. There are considerably fewer of them than, say, the white and even the lighter browns and browns. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just a genetic uh, different. Uh, basically, the, the lighter colors are dominant genetically. Oh. So hmm. you have less and less, you have fewer and fewer of the black animals uh, mm. or the darker animals compared mm. to the lighter animals. So we're actually having a lot of trouble getting uh, enough black fiber to make the black socks and the uh, gray socks. So we've been sold out for a while. I don't know yet whether they'll be in stock anytime soon, hmm. and it's just because of the the demand for those is really high, and supply is relatively fixed. So, and you don't do and they don't do any dyeing of the of the fiber uh, at all. We don't. We don't. And the co-op that we we go we use we we uh, work with doesn't dye the socks. There mm -hmm. are companies out that sell alpaca socks that are dyed, mm -hmm. so you can get literally any color of the you rainbow. Get purple uh, if you wanted, yeah. Or alpaca fiber, but uh, we do all natural colors. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. I want to find out more about um, how much they cost and all those sorts of things. But let me take a break really quick and um, thank our sponsors because obviously without them we wouldn't be here. And uh, they are Mount Gox. <clears throat> obviously everyone in the Bitcoin community pretty much knows Mount Gox. It's mtgox.com. Mount Gox is the way, the de facto way. And they have um, something like 90% or, or approximately uh, market share of buying Bitcoins online. You can buy and sell Bitcoins for currency. US dollars and like 16 new currencies they just added. So you can literally um, deposit money into Mt. Gox in one, any one of these currencies and then buy Bitcoins with them. And you can, uh, you know, you, you can actually deposit funds in many of these different currencies and you'll have an actual separate balance for each currency, whatever currency it is that you deal with. So it makes it super, super convenient and easy no matter where you are in the world. Um, there's a currency that matches your local area or one that's convenient for you. And they have uh, two-factor authentication, which may, makes it super secure. Even if you're using a uh, computer that's full of viruses and you don't even know it, it's still safe because your wallet file is actually not on your computer. Your bitcoins and your funds are on Mt. Gox. So it's safe from, your, from local viruses. And with this, the two-factor authentication is a little tiny U USB key. It's really, really tiny. It's like one of those little dongles. You keep it on your, I keep it on my keychain, like the drugstore little barcode thing that you get a discount when you shop at the grocery store or whatever. It's tinier than that. And you stick it in the USB slot and it puts in a password. And that password is only good for one second. So even if you have a virus on your computer that grabs passwords, it's useless because it's only good for one second. So you can literally use a public 
kiosk terminal, cyber cafe, the, you know, the internet at the uh, lobby of the hotel or something and log onto your account and feel secure because nobody can grab that. I mean, if they, they could grab the password, but it's useless if they don't have that USB key. It's called a UB key. So they offer that as well. Um, as well as so many new things, Mt. Gox Live, is, I'm sorry, Mt. Gox Mobile is their new app for Android and for jailbroken iPhones that's absolutely brilliant. You can transfer funds with a barcode. You can create an invoice if you're a merchant. It's basically a point of sale device in your hand on any Android uh, tablet or phone or even iPhone that's jailbroken. So uh, that's called Mt. Gox Mobile. Check that out in the Android App Store. And um, also, uh, Mount, you can go to mountgoxlive.com for more information about that. And we thank Mount Gox. Uh, be sure and, and send them a message and thank them for sponsoring the Bitcoin Show and Only One TV. And Bitcoin Bonus. Bitcoinbonus.com is an amazing service. Uh, it's much, much more exciting than it sounds at first because um, I had been turned on to it way before I knew who was behind it or th they decided to become a sponsor because people were saying that you can, anything that you're buying online anyway, you can actually go to bitcoinbonus.com, search for that merchant and get a, click a link and get a referral link to that, whether it's uh, buy.com or any of the major retailers. Um, one particular person I heard from was a website designer and he buys hosting accounts in the name of his clients like several times a week. And so he goes and grabs that link every single time and he gets, the idea behind it is you get a kickback in Bitcoins. So every time you shop online, you're gonna kick, you get a kickback in Bitcoins. So it's brilliant. Um, is uh, Alpaca Socks on Bitcoin bonus? You need to be. It is, actually. It is. There you go. So, yeah, there you go. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, you wouldn't, you'd be surprised what's on there. So, you just go to bitcoinbonus.com and search for alpaca, and you'll find it. So, when, but when you go to buy your alpaca socks, you can pay in bitcoins, and then you get a kickback in bitcoins. So, it's a brilliant thing. It's just money you wouldn't have had otherwise in the form of bitcoins. So, check out bitcoinbonus.com, and we thank them for sponsoring us. And... Mezzi Grill, everybody knows, <laughs> the world's first restaurant that accepts Bitcoin and also sells Bitcoin right there. They're open seven days a week for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And they're right here in Midtown Manhattan, just uh, three blocks south of Columbus Circle. Columbus Circle is a very famous tourist spot. Uh, many films have been shot there. It's the entrance of, uh, to uh, Central Park. And um, it's 57th Street and 8th Avenue. And... Uh, Mezzi Grill is just three blocks, three really short blocks south of that, right on, um, it's on 8th Avenue, right? 8th Avenue at 54, 55, 8th Avenue and 55 on your left. So check it out, go to Mezzi Grill, and you can check out their menu and pictures of the place at mezegrill.com, mezegrill.com. And not only that, now they, are, uh, they have franchise opportunities available, so you can own your own Mezzi Grill in your own town. Uh, check it out. It's like um, it's kind of like a Chipotle style, but a little bit more upscale, and it's Mediterranean food, so it's very very healthy. Um, but contact them at uh, Bitcoin at mezzigrill.com, uh, or just go to their website mezzigrill.com, and thank them for sponsoring the Bitcoin Show as well. So we're back with uh, David Forster of uh, GrassHillAlpacas.com. So it's Grass Hill, G-R-A-S-S Hill. Alpacas, A L P A C A S dot com, right? That's how they find these products. Yes. Okay. Yep. Cool. And there's a uh, there's a link on that that main page to the uh, the Bitcoin sales uh, alpaca socks or Bitcoins cool. page. So. So how much does a pair of socks cost? Are they are they all the same price? Are there different styles for different right. prices? They are. They are all the same price um, right now for everything that's listed on that page. It's part of the reason why I haven't done. Uh, offered any other types of socks we could also do hats um it's mm -hmm. just to try to keep it simple but uh it, we will most likely be launching uh some new products in the near future and so right now the price is um three what is it sorry um <laughs> yeah 385 <laughs> it's changing as you speak right it well yeah it, it, it's <laughs> The, the site is, is static, the price is static, but I change it uh, as the Bitcoin um, market uh, fluctuates. Yeah. So today it's 385 and usually usually the price I list is a little higher than my actual price, mm. and that is because um, I like to not 
raise the price when people contact me. I like to mm -hmm. give them a uh, slightly better price. So when people contact me, I go to the market, find out what the Bitcoin rate is, and uh, calculate the price at that time. Uh -huh. uh, so some most of the time people get a better price uh, than what's listed. Um, Always better I, to under promise and over deliver. Yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> that's the idea. So Don't disappoint. Uh, that's yeah. the way I do it. I, I haven't linked it in any way automatically made it a dynamic price because um, uh, just because I haven't taken the time to develop all the back end that would be necessary to do that and mm -hmm. protect me from currency fluctuations in the uh, exchange yeah. rate for Bitcoin. So yeah. uh, this is the way I handle it right now. Uh, mm -hmm. How often do you update the price? Every day? Uh, it depends on how fast the uh, <laughs> the exchange rate moves. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've had 385 for several days now. Mm -hmm. And even though the Bitcoin rate's been fluctuating considerably, um, I've left it alone. I've tried to, I try not to uh, change it so much that, you know, mm -hmm. That every time yeah. someone looks at the site, it's different. Mm -hmm. I try to keep it a little bit more consistent um, yeah. as cool. I can, as much as I can. That's so. about the best you can do if you're doing it manually. And then when you, when they actually place the order, you you will adjust the rate as of that moment that they're they're it, taking the right. When, so I do it through email. It's it's mm -hmm. not automated. People mm -hmm. send me an email, um, and uh, I respond with a uh, with an address mm -hmm. and tell them what the price is at that time. And mm -hmm. within reason, uh, if, even if it takes people a few days, I honor that price I told them originally. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, um, I lock in my cost. Uh, unfortunately, my, our suppliers don't take Bitcoins yet. I'm working on them, <laughs> but they're not there yet. Yeah. Um, so w when I do uh, make a sale, I lock in my, uh, my cost um, at, at that time when I make the sale mm -hmm. and turn it over into s another form of currency that my suppliers will take and yeah. um <laughs> and the remainder i keep on and mm -hmm. it depends but yeah. the remainder I keep at least for that the time being so yeah keeping a bitcoin okay that's cool so um let's see and so there are are there various styles and sizes i'm assuming uh so right now it's just one style but we do have different sizes um i can hold a couple of them up sure uh We've got the this is this is the gray and the dark brown. Mm -hmm. um, I hope you can see that. Yeah. Uh, we also have um, this is the uh, fawn or the light brown, uh -huh. right here. Uh -huh. It's kind of tough to tell probably with the lighting, um, which is a perennial problem. I have my pictures don't do it justice, but uh, <laughs> and then the the always in demand uh, black or dark gray. Um, this is like the only one I have left. It's a kid's size and. Mm. Um, don't know when I'll be able to get more of these, um, mm. but there it is. So for everyone who's been asking about them, um, <laughs> so they're all the same price, even regardless of the color. Even Correct. If, yeah. Uh, I've, been toy be I've been toying with the idea that if I ever get any black ones in stock, I'll double the price of them because uh, supply and demand. Hey. Supply and demand. It's, do? it's hard to keep them in stock. So. Yeah. Uh, but nice. uh, I I haven't done that. So okay. we'll see if I actually do. But and then they come in d and like, uh, are there a variety of adult sizes or? How yes, many? Uh, there's there's the the so-called so just the women's, um, mm -hmm. which is the medium, and that's a sock size seven to ten. Mm -hmm. And then the men's is um, is con is called the is the large, and it's a sock size ten to thirteen. Mm -hmm. We also have extra large, which is uh, thirteen to sixteen, mm -hmm. and then uh, the kids sizes is, is uh, four to six, uh, and those mm -hmm. are sock sizes. So mm -hmm. when you're trying to figure out what size you are, um, you can Google your if you Google sock size shoe to shoe <laughs> size conversion. Most mm -hmm. people don't tend to know their sock size, <laughs> um, so I, I end up converting it for most people, but yeah. some people. Some people know, That's but cool. um, I hmm. wear the size men's large, which is a 10 to 13. I'm a size nine and a half shoe, so um, hmm. that gives you a little bit of an idea on how that works. Okay. It never seems fair that like a kid's sock should cost the same as a size 13. <laughs> a guy who it's has true. A <laughs> it's true. They use a little less fiber, uh, but they're, the manufacturing process is... Probably is the same and equal, so. if not more so, because it's smaller. Right, right. Yeah. right. <laughs> a little bit more tricky, but true, true. Cool. And, and now, do you ship them directly from uh, your? Do you ship them yourself, or is it coming from the co-op? 
Uh, I ship them myself. Uh, oh, okay. So we have them here. We keep a stock uh, here, mm -hmm. and when I get an order, I'll ship it out. Uh, usually within 24 hours, uh, I'll get it out in the mail. Mm -hmm. uh, the prices include shipping, domestic shipping. Uh, oh, okay. International, I add more, but it, mm -hmm. it, I don't gouge people on international shipping. It's mm -hmm. it's what my cost is. So. Cool. Um, and great. it's very reasonable since socks are light. So yeah, uh, it's it's only a couple bucks to ship to or a couple uh, oh, big, yeah. a, you know, big bucks. what like <laughs> half a bit, half of a bitcoin <laughs> uh, to ship to Canada right now. I'd say and yeah. uh, maybe a little less than a bitcoin to ship to most mm -hmm. of Europe. So it's it's very reasonable. So you guys out there, you can actually support a local uh, local farm, a family farm, and a uh, and a bitcoin. One of the our first Bitcoin uh, early adopters and uh, merchants, uh, grasshillalpacas.com. So it's G R A S S Hill, H I L L, alpacas is A L P A C A S.com. How have you, uh, I mean, have, obviously you, you've received a lot of free advertising, right? Because <laughs> yeah. alpacas bit and bitcoins kind of have gone hand in hand since the beginning, um, just because of you guys accepting it. And what like have you been contacted by by media and and uh, done other yeah. interviews and things? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, so things started to get really nutty when uh, I think it was either February or March we got slash dotted, uh, <laughs> and uh, in that one 24-hour period we had more hits to our website than we had for the entire history of our farm to that point. Isn't that um, crazy? And that happened. Which is. What was that? That's crazy when that happens, right? When you get, yes. What that means is getting mentioned on Slashdot. So when you get mentioned on Slashdot, it's just huge. You just get tons and tons of hits. Did it bring yeah, your server and, down? <laughs> and they had linked right to our site. It was, wow. it was fantastic. Um, the Amazing. best uh, free marketing you can hope for, really. When, was, and, when did that uh, happen? When was that? Uh, yeah. It was, I think, either it was February or March, somewhere in that time wow. frame. I don't remember the date. but Early on, yeah. Yeah, it was early on, and... Uh, it was it was pretty wild, um, yeah. and sales were pretty good for a couple of weeks afterwards. It was that's it was back when Satoshi was still active in the community. Did you ever have any correspondence with him? Um, someone by the that name has uh, sent me uh, a couple messages through f our Facebook page, mm. um, but other than that, uh, yeah, nothing. that's probably not um, him. But yeah, if, if it was from satoshi on the forum that's actually him but uh we would we would yeah. assume but uh yeah facebook now anybody everybody's I, taking I on that it, name now. i figured it probably wasn't actually yeah satoshi, <laughs> exactly but, uh, you know you never yeah. know so yeah um and we have been interviewed for some um mainstream media publications so i was interviewed for smart uh, money an article in smart money yeah um that was carried on the yahoo finance homepage for an entire weekend <laughs> wow uh there like i had I had uh, family and friends from around from around the country uh, calling and emailing me, asking, you know, say, is that is that Dave? Is that, is that you? Is that, <laughs> is that really you? Um, which, that was pretty cool. I know um, it's crazy, right? Yeah, um, it really is. And then uh, the New York Daily uh, newspaper also uh, wrote an article about uh, bitcoins and featured us in that article as well, and mm -hmm. a couple other. Uh, we, I was interviewed for NPR, um, nothing that made it on the air, but it was in a uh, one of their online articles. So, yeah, just very cool. I mean, Podcast. and stuff that we would never, as a small farm, ever be able to afford to buy that kind of publicity. Right. And here it's com it's coming to us for nothing. <laughs> um, I, and also, I guess uh, there's some conferences in in Europe. I got contact from someone saying that uh, he wanted to buy two pairs of alpaca socks to bring with him to this conference in Spain. Uh, and he was going to give one of the so pairs of socks away as like a door prize for his t conference talk. Mm. Uh, so you know, just really cool stuff. Uh, and then yeah. we've been selling. We've been able to sell because of this um, internationally, where before you know most of our sales were to people who lived within five miles of our farm. <laughs> now I now I've sold to people in Russia, Norway, Finland, the UK, Czech Republic, France, Canada, and Australia, and several other countries and all across the United States. So it's really been great for us as a small business. Um, yeah, that's the beauty of the internet, and which is a global network and a global currency of Bitcoin makes it so yeah. easy. You don't have to worry about currency conversion or anything like that. 
the mm-hmm. speaking of conferences, we missed you at the uh, the first Bitcoin conference and World Expo last month in New York. I yeah, was, I was I was uh, incommunicado up in uh, upstate Maine at the time. I, uh, I was I had a long uh, long standing uh, trip plan there, so uh, I didn't okay. make it. But okay. hopefully well, the we next do that time. again. Yeah, the next time for sure. We have to have an alpaca socks table. I mean, you know, <laughs> yes. what is Bitcoin without that? <laughs> That's great. So are you thinking about expanding into other products? You were talking about hats and, and yeah. jackets. So, and So we sell um, at our farm stand, which we open up right around Thanksgiving for you know holiday sales, um, which we sell to just a bunch of the people in, in the area, really. Um, mm-hmm. We do have other products that are available, scarves, hats, um, some other types of socks that we sell, mm-hmm. um, sur- surrounded by some of the products here. Um, but uh, the w- we will almost certainly be doing that. It's just a bit a matter of time for me. I've got quite a few irons in the fire right now, so it's been uh, tr- difficult to get that squared away. Um, for one thing, it, the management of everything gets a little bit more hectic as there's more products, of course, mm-hmm. uh, which of course is easily sur- easy to get over that uh, that hurdle. But um, just haven't done it yet. One thing. Another thing that we're going to do, uh, and I'll announce it here uh, on the show for, for the first time, uh, we're actually going to be offering to sell an alpaca for bitcoins, uh, which would be another first, I'm pretty sure, livestock for bitcoins, um, <laughs> and uh, working on some uh, a web page just to sh- you know have the basic information. But uh, we'll give a 10% discount for bitcoin sales f- and through November 1st. Uh, for anyone who's you know been thinking about buying an alpaca and has a bunch of bitcoins uh, burning their hole burning a hole in their electronic wallet, uh, <laughs> we uh, will sell them uh, sell them an alpaca. So uh, hmm. uh, it's probably more yeah. secure in some ways because it'd be di- more difficult to steal someone's alpaca than their bitcoin. Well, it depends. Yeah. It depends on where you keep it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not. It wouldn't be. It's not easy to steal an alpaca. You, yeah, they're kind of hard to pick up and carry off. They bite. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they don't bite, but they do spit. If oh, you, they uh, spit at you. <laughs> but not, they don't do it unless you really uh, make them mad. But um, peeve them. Oh my god! I gosh. suspect trying to carry one off would make them mad enough. <laughs> yeah, pretty typical if they don't know you. Do they? Do, do you? Um, I mean, do they recognize you? Do they know you? Are they? Are they like pets? Uh, s- some of them. So they're they're a herd animal. They're they're a prey animal um and a herd animal they have pretty much no natural defenses other than being in a herd mm. so what that means is um that they're pretty flighty mm-hmm. uh but they have gotten to know us and we have some of the animals that are so friendly they'll come up to anyone and, and give them a kiss uh wow. <laughs> that's what we call it they come right up to your face and will put their nose right up to you and smell smell your nose um wow. and we call it you know giving kisses uh mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. not normal alpaca behavior uh <laughs> in peru you would never see that wow. um and uh we have some animals that are much more standard uh, alpaca uh <laughs> dispositions um mm. they're mm. not mean but they're just they're they're afraid of you uh, yeah. generally speaking so hmm. and it also depends on whether it's a uh, pregnant mother or mother with a small baby they're a little bit more ornery but um mm, true true and so i mean you're not obviously you're not um you're not using them for meat or anything like that so it's only for their fur their fiber so when um so and you say that you only shear them once a year so yep. basically you care for them the whole entire year for uh, yielding the fur once a year correct wow and 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 the the nice thing is the alpaca fiber is valuable enough that uh, you know you can uh, make a profit on hmm. the alpaca fiber sales, um, especially if you if you go into the the lower end animals and you, you start small, hmm. uh, you can buy an inexpensive animal, breed it, have babies, shear the animals and sell the fiber. You can make money. Um, hmm. When you buy the higher end animals, what you're really doing there is trying to uh, sell the top end breeding stock and win win awards just like with other livestock wow. uh, so that's how it works and then um the other the other thing that makes it work is that they are extremely uh, maintenance free care free uh our vet veterinary bills are almost zero our feed bills are very low um 
we spend the time to really improve our soil and our pastures so that uh, we don't have to feed them expensive supplements and everything else. Um, and then the, the probably the biggest expense is, is hay, uh, actually, uh, and that's pretty reasonable too. They don't eat a lot. They're not big animals. That's so. what I was going to ask you. Do they eat a lot? Yeah, but they no, just they're, they weigh um, between uh, 150 to 175 for a full-grown animal. Some of the larger males might get up to 200 pounds or so, but uh, they're not a huge animal. So, and they don't, they really don't eat that much, and they're very content to eat nothing but grass. If as long mm. as it's high enough quality pasture, um, they don't really need grain at all. Uh, we we do supplement. The females especially, especially the pregnant females, we supplement uh, a small amount of grain, especially in the winter months, to get them the extra calories they need and uh, mm -hmm. some of the minerals that might be lacking in the hay. But mm -hmm. uh, very, very carefree animals. So. Wow. So they eat grass and hay. So like, like ca much. cattle eat grass and horses eat hay, right? So they kind of, uh, <laughs> they kind of eat both. Uh, yeah. More or less, those those rules. Uh, <laughs> this is those how, rules, how much I know rules. about farming <laughs> and livestock. <laughs> yeah, those rules are uh, you know they're, they're generalizations. But uh, mm -hmm. for instance, although in Peru alpacas are much smaller, mm -hmm. uh, and they don't really eat grass or hay, they eat scrubby dead brush in the high Andes mountains. Wow. If you actually look at pictures of where they're actually from, mm -hmm. you be amazed that anything can survive there at all so wow. what we give them here with nice green grass is mm -hmm. is actually orders of magnitude better mm -hmm. than what they native what they would have had in their native mm -hmm. habitat um which i think which is very interesting and and as a result of that actually the quality of the fiber and the amount of fiber an alpaca produces in the united states is in some cases an, an order of magnitude better slash more than uh, what they produce in, in Peru. So wow. it's very interesting um, how that works. They're spoiled, of course, typical American alpacas that are spoiled. And yeah, I mean, if you're going to be an animal, I would, I would much rather be one that is um, uh, raised for my fur than my meat. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they live yeah. a lush life and they do get a haircut once a year. Exactly. That's it's nice. a good life. That's nice. <laughs> Do you have anything else on your farm? Other, other. Uh, do you grow anything else, or have other livestock there too? Yeah, uh, we we have um, a few goats that help us to keep the brush cleared. Uh, mm. They're amazing brush clearing machines. Um, <laughs> just and then just just a standard issue uh, sort of multi species farm. We have some chickens running around, some guineas running around eating the ticks. Uh, <laughs> and then this summer, uh, I had a big, uh, uh, a large garden. Uh, we were selling produce from. Um, mm. Didn't make any sales for our bitcoins. I tried, but uh, not a lot of local people that are coming by a farm stand uh, <laughs> with bitcoins <laughs> with bitcoins in their pocket. Not but uh, <laughs> I did. I got out, got out the word a little bit more, which is, yeah. is also uh, important. For yeah. Us, so. Anything you can sell online, obviously you can do with Bitcoin. The um, there are um, there are these organic. Dairies like uh, Ed buys. Um, there's this place called Utter Milk that he buys um, raw milk and all kinds of dairy products, and it's like a co-op because that's the only way they can do it legally. Apparently, I mean it's like yeah. illegal to to eat natural food. Uh, yeah, it's so kind of bogus. <laughs> yeah, so 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 bogus. Um, but if you're a member of a co-op, somehow there's some loophole in that way, and then you're so you're a member of this organization, and then they actually deliver. They come with a truck and they deliver once a week in Manhattan. So you, so we get raw milk and cheese and eggs and on and on, like everything, heavy cream, that's all sorts of stuff, um, right from the the farm, right from the cow. And, that's excellent. Uh, weekly, yeah. yeah, really nice. In mass. Unfortunately, in, in Massachusetts, it's even more silly. Um, you're actually not allowed to sell raw milk in Massachusetts except right directly off the farm. So that mm. kind of an operation can't actually exist under current Massachusetts law, wow. uh, which is totally ridiculous, of course. It is. Um, uh, Connecticut um, is is better though. You can actually buy raw milk in the grocery stores, um, mm. so they they're a little bit ahead of the ahead mm -hmm. of the game in terms of allowing people to eat what they want. I think it's uh, Connecticut. That's where we're, that's where the farm is that we get that from. Utter milk. I'm not sure what state that's. Oh, it's New Jersey. Okay, Utter milk. It's U D D E R, like a cow's udder. Uttermilk.com 
is the one that, and we can order <laughs> online. Cool. It's like crazy. It's I guess it's in New Jersey, but every state is a little bit different. Yeah, I mean, how long is it going to be before uh, you know you ha you? It's illegal to breathe air unless it's bottled by Dannon. You know, I mean, it's really really scary. These monopolies. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can't, you can't breathe in air because then you breathe out CO2, and that's yeah, just that's a crime. It's wrong. Yeah, exactly. Unless it's been pasteurized and sanitized by <laughs> corporatology and profit. <laughs> So, well, thanks so much for joining us. Is there anything you want to tell the, the world about um, uh, alpaca socks and selling alpaca socks for Bitcoin or any, any, any thought you'd like to leave the public with? No, I can't think of anything that I haven't already, uh, already <laughs> mentioned, but um, just right. uh, ask people to check out the website and yeah. uh, be, there'll, be more, there'll be more stuff coming out uh, from us. And uh, mm. anyone who has a business that's thinking about getting into Bitcoin sales, I highly recommend it highly small recommend business it. this is a great way to do it there's you know there's some a learning curve to it there's some uh there's some things you got to take into consideration that you might not normally think about like exchange mm -hmm. rate risk but it's all manageable yeah and uh if i can do it anyone can do it <laughs> have so. you had any problems with chargebacks or um, identity theft or uh, none, um, none that i know of transaction no fees <laughs> no one's ever come back to me uh with any problems i uh I've been using Trade Hill um, to sort of to do my exchanging, uh, and I've been happy with them. Um, b before I got before I got too big and before I got too many bitcoins, if you will, mm -hmm. I was actually using the bitcoins to buy other products, mm -hmm. and that's all I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, now I still do that, but I also um, uh, do have to turn some into US dollars to pay suppliers but um, sure. it'd be really great if someone would uh, uh, open up a fertilizer company or something that uh, accepted bitcoins but uh, I, I'm, work, I'm working on that it's one of my many projects but uh, <laughs> so if you have a fertilizer company out there what was that I, I'm telling I'm telling the audience if you have a fertilizer company out there set it up to accept bitcoins just go to bitcoinme.com and then click on accept and there's simple simple fisher price instructions on how to um, accept bitcoins it's it just takes two seconds it's so easy and um you got a customer right here in uh, grasshillalpacas.com there they want to buy fertilizer all you got to do is accept bitcoin so there you go see yep, that's how it that's works it. you get a customer there that's, that's all that's built-in customer do. i know i hear that all the time from merchants like uh roger Ver from memory dealers he's he's like trying to get more and more of his suppliers to accept Bitcoin. Because if, if you can, you know, you start with the retail operation and then you move your way back to the suppliers and their suppliers and so exactly. on, and it's, it's just this domino effect, then all of a sudden everybody accepts Bitcoin. So uh, it's, it's a whole new world there. <laughs> yep. Well, thanks so much um, for you. joining us. We really appreciate you taking the time and uh, showing us the products. And I'm, I can't wait till I'm all decked out. I want to do it. I want to do it in the future when you've got an alpaca hat and an alpaca jacket. And uh, I'll be wearing my alpaca socks and uh, I'll just be ready. Sounds good. Ready for winter in New York. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks so all right. much. All right. Thank you. Take care. Yep. Have and, a good day. All right. And we'll see you guys same time tomorrow. <laughs>